This clip is to introduce the main ideas and the motivation for using instrumental variable estimation. We will work in a regression context. I assume that you are familiar with basic regression analysis and ordinary least squares regression. So when we are thinking about regression analysis, we're usually, usually dealing in the following context. We have some sort of dependent variable, something in variation in which we want to explain. And then we have explanatory variables, variables that explain that variation. There will be examples in a second. Usually, whatever model we build will not be a perfect model. And we have to contemplate the possibility that there are error terms or that there are aspects in the dependent variable that are not modeled. So formally, we often write a model y as a dependent variable. Then the green bit is the explained part, beta naught plus beta 1 times x plus an error term. Right? Here we propose a linear relationship, which we often do. So let's think of a couple of examples to illustrate this. Let's assume you want to understand why some school children get higher test scores than others. And one of the explanatory variables, by, by all means not the only one, is the school type. For instance, is it a private school in the, that would be relevant for the UK, or is it a KIPP school or something else? And there will be all sorts of other explanatory variables, but there will be some things which cannot be captured. Perhaps economic background of students, perhaps the, the amount of parental support they get, and perhaps other factors. And these are factors which can't be m always measured and therefore do, are not part of the explanatory variables. Let's say we are interested in whether, and if so, how the school type has an impact on the test scores of a particular student. Issues now arise for the following reason. All the aspects which we cannot model, perhaps economic background, perhaps that could be modeled, but the amount of parental support, for instance, that of course has an impact on the test scores. But our model doesn't really capture it. They go into the error term. But if these factors are now correlated with the school type, for instance, if parents that give more support are also willing to spend money on a private school, then the effect that parental support has will actually bleed statistically into the effect we measure the school type has on test scores. So that effect of school type which we measure will actually be some sort of mixture of the effect of school type and the effect of our omitted variables, for instance parental support. Let's look at a second example. Let's say we are interested in wages as a dependent variable and years of schooling as an explanatory variable. Do more years of schooling lead to higher wages? Again, there will be some things which we cannot model. And in this particular case, one could just think of concepts like ability and intelligence. So there are just some things about ability and intelligence we cannot measure. Again, we are interested in the years of schooling, but ability and intelligence will have an effect on wages, but importantly, also an effect on schooling. More intelligent children tend to go to school longer, and therefore the effect we measure in terms of years of schooling on wages will be a combined, in some way, combined effect of the omitted variables and actually years of schooling. So it's this aspect of these omitted variables, which are in the error term, of those being correlated to the explanatory variables, which preach one of our main assumptions or pillars of regression analysis. If you've done any regression course, you will have heard of the zero conditional mean assumption. That is the assumption that preaches here. When we do regression analysis, we have to assume ordinarily that the error term and the explanatory variables are uncorrelated. If they are not, then ordinary least squares, which is the type of regression analysis all standard software packages do, like SPSS, Excel, will deliver biased or unreliable results. There will be no technicality. But as I said, I assume that you know the basics of regression analysis. So let's take the wages examples and label wages W, years of schooling S, and a narrow term epsilon. So 
The situation we have is, let's say we have observations for wages and years of schooling, a for sample of employees, and we're interested in this model. The problem is that the error term and schooling are correlated, because the error term will contain something like ability and intelligence, which may impact your years of schooling. What we want is really a, a, a model where we have a variable for schooling as sat, let's call it that for the time being, that is uncorrelated with the error term, because then we can use our sort of standard regression framework again. So we want an uncorrelated asset, uncorrelated with the error term, that means uncorrelated with ability and intelligence. How can we get such a variable as sat from our variable s, the actually observations of years of schooling? What we need is what is called an instrument set. What is such an instrument? Well, we, it has to have two particular features. It needs to be, uh, it's a variable that is uncorrelated with epsilon, so hence uncorrelated with ability and intelligence, and therefore is also irrelevant to explain variation in the wages W. Secondly, it has to be correlated with the variable x. Now we'll see examples in a minute about what such instruments can be in our examples we discussed earlier. But before we get there, let's see what we would do if we had such a set. If we had such a set, what we could do is we could postulate a relationship between S, the years of schooling, and that instrument set. Now we do that in a regression context again. So I'll write down here a regression relationship, a linear one in this particular case. If we then estimate that relationship and obtain estimated coefficients alpha naught and alpha 1, we get altogether a predicted value of s, s hat. And now it's that value which we can use in here. And why is that s hat uncorrelated with epsilon? Well, it is by construction, because variation in s hat is solely due to the variable set, our instrument. And we assume that set is uncorrelated with epsilon. That was our condition, our hash condition here. And therefore, by construction, s hat will also be uncorrelated with epsilon. So that's a very, very important aspect to, to understand where we get that s hat from, only from variables that are uncorrelated with epsilon. And therefore, it's also important that z is actually correlated with s, so we get some variation in s hat. If the second condition wasn't given, we would not get any variation in s hat. So what we need is an instrument. Let's get back to our two examples, and then hopefully things will fall into place and make sense altogether. So let's look at our first examples where we are trying to explain variation in test scores, and we want to know whether school type has some influence on the test scores. We need an instrument that is on the one hand correlated with school type, but on the other hand uncorrelated with test scores and therefore doesn't appear in the error term. And therefore is uncorrelated with parental support and economic background as well. Now sometimes we are lucky and there are what are called lotteries to give particular students access to particular schools. Now why does that work? Well because they are lotteries. If they are proper lotteries, then it should be obvious that the outcome of such lotteries is a random outcome and uncorrelated to economic background or parental support. On the other hand, lotteries should have an impact on school type. So if it's a lottery to, for instance, access a particular type of school that is very sought after. So that would be a useful instrument here. If you go to the second example, wages as a function of years of schooling, sometimes school regulations deliver an instrument. In some places, regulations are such that some children, for instance, those born late in the year, have to start school even before they are five, and others, born early in the year, start school only once they are almost six. And if now all school children can quit school at a particular age, say immediately once they turn 16, that means that those which are born late in the year have a higher minimum number of school years. That means the time of birth in the year can be used as an instrument. While the month of birth should be uncorrelated to ability and intelligence, there is no reason to think otherwise. 
it will be potentially correlated to your years of schooling.